Thanks, Volodymyr. Today we're having three to three. So we decided to gather all of those who have the position as for all of the representatives of different opinions on the situation which is near uh, now and which happened during the first days of September, when on the 6th of September we had the big strike of the owners and users of the cars of with European plates. And since these times this strike was stopped, but still the problem didn't vanish. So the later it is, the more people are using the European plates in Ukraine, and still this is the ownership of the people who use those cars, but still they are not owners sometimes. They didn't bring these cars according to the current legislation. So still there is the whole queue of matters and problems because of that, the risks. And on the other hand, it's obvious that this situation was not a just an urgent one. There was there were some preconditions for that. So we're having Oleg Nazarenko here, the Director General of Automobile Association of Importers and Dealers, who is obviously will represent the position as for the European plates, whether we should legalize or not legalize the European plates on the cars. And you, we see that he considers that this legalization is not needed. Ivan Chernyavsky is the representative of the association after Yevrosila, not to legalize, he conceded, she, he concedes. Katerina Polanska, she is the uh, candidate of the bi biological sciences, the ecologist of the, ecologi uh, of the association Ecology Rights Human. She is the representative of those who try to defend the environment. As for this matter, Pavlo Sebastianovich, a well-known liberal expert who is the representative of the civil platform New Country. As we can understand, he has the liberal position. And we can hear the arguments from Pavlo for that. Why am I saying that at once? Well, because for our discussion to be more interesting, we will give the word, the floor, in a time to listen to this picture in black and white simultaneously for the different representatives of different positions. And Denis Dohopoli, who is an IT entrepreneur, the head of the Business Accelerator Growth Shop, and the person who leads the Ukrainian bright business ideas for the world market, who will representative as well as his colleague Mikola Maluha, the director on communications, not the positions which are expert ones, but more of civil positions, civil society positions, both for Denise and Mikola. Mikola is an owner of the car on the Europlates. So let's begin with the representatives of those interested stakeholders, which position is much more obvious, and who will be able to present precisely the two main positions which we're having here, and we will speak later on about the details with those who have the position, either the civil or the expert on this. So please, Mr. Oleg, now. Thank you. I will put certain accents for you to understand. Look, really, the problem of the cars at the, in, uh, with the foreign registration emerged because Ukraine has a very high, I'd say, big taxes for the input of the cars. So all of us know a very famous curve of La Faire, which has that the more taxes are, the bigger taxes are, the more temptation is not to pay them. The less taxes are, as our eastern neighbor said, pay the taxes and sleep calm. The problem is that all of the evil because of the high taxes, and if we decrease the taxes for the input of the cars, there won't be any temptation to try not to pay them. Of course, there will be people, for instance, in Italy, which still won't pay taxes, because you know that in Italy they are fa uh, fighting even for netti, 
which register their cars in Poland and Bulgaria just to save money on the insurance because it's cheaper there. But still it's not the highly sca or big scale uh, phenomenon. So the police still fights the cars non-Italian registration. I can see that this problem can be solved decreasing the taxes for everybody, both for the newer and uh, used cars and to give an opportunity for the guys who are using European plates to get away from this European registration, to use this customs clearance. Let's define for whom it will be profitable to decrease the taxes or for whom it will be profitable to increase them. For automobile importers it's rather profitable to decrease the taxes because if the taxes go down they will be able to cheapen the value of the car and to sell them to the Ukrainians. These cars will be more accessible to, to the Ukrainians, they will sell more, it will be profitable for everyone. For common Ukrainians it is profitable too. For those guys who are using foreign plates, it is profitable too. And let's count f for whom it is not profitable to decrease the taxes. Maybe it is not profitable for the Ukrainians which own Lithuanian firms who organize the business through the camels and avatars on the foreign registration. Is it profitable for them? Of course not, because when the taxes will be decreased, for instance, the services of those firms in the internet, online, you could see from uh, they cost from till 400,000 euro sometimes. So we can see that there are two million cars of these cars in Ukraine, multiply them by 1,000 euro, for instance, and Ukrainians just for the recent year gave the two billion euro cash to the owners of these firms, to those so-called Ukrainian businessmen. Of course the decrease of the taxes is not profitable for them. If the customs clearance will cost 400,000 euro, whom will the Ukrainians bring the money? To the state or 1,400 only to the organizers of those firms? I think it's again an obvious answer. So, the owners of those firms, which had the certain... The, it's not profitable for them to decrease the taxes. For instance, I don't have a Lithuanian firm. Just imagine myself. I will tell you the story, because not everyone knows that. You are buying, for instance, in Germany, uh, some car at Franz Müller. And what do you think he will say if you say? please, don't take out the registration. I'd like to take this car without the registration. And I'd like to have German registration, he will say. Are you crazy? And then I will pay fines for you, which will be sent for me to my home. I will pay for utilization to, for you. No, no, not utilization, but ecological one. The transport maybe too? I don't need it. Take the, Take this car. And it doesn't have this foreign registration anymore. So I need to have either my own Lithuanian firm or some relative in Poland, or I have to appeal for some Ukrainian businessman who had a huge business now, and I already told you uh, what, uh, what are the sums of money, 60 billion of hryvnia every year, annually. How do you think? Can they lobby their business for this money? Why is still the parliament has 23 law drafts about the legalization of European plates and not a single law draft about the decrease of the taxes for the automobile input? We've developed the law draft. And besides the MP Lapin, not a single one agreed to sign it. There is not a single law draft to decrease the taxes for input because it's not profitable. The lobbyists, it's profitable for them to increase the taxes for input. And also the customs officers, the law enforcement, which cover this business. It is non-profitable for them too because everybody knows the news. How was the head of the customs office arrested who took $200 to let this car in? because it's very nice to catch the fish in the dirty water. So all for all those 
pure Ukrainians, it's always profitable to decrease the taxes. But for the people who have this proper business, they want the Ukrainians to, to go to them and not to customs clean. I would decrease the taxes for import and we offered that to the Ministry of Finance, but as the Ministry of Finance says that there will be lots of losses to the budget, I would say that one of the options is we'd like European prices for the cars. Let it be European prices for the fuel then. Let's uh, make the in input ticket, which is rather cheap. You can buy a cheap car, but it will be expensive to pay for the fuel. Then the people who won't be able to afford themselves fuel, they won't be able to drive the car. So the, as for the colleague from the ecological organizations, as for the matters on, on ecology, we had certain contradictions with the previous prime minister. So there was a suggestion to have an ecological uh, money. The older the car is, the more you have to pay for it. The idea is good. But still, I consider that in our country it can't be implemented because it will be a tax for the poor. Because who uses the old Zaporozhets, old Moskvich, only the pensioners? And when the Prime Minister told me, ex-Prime Minister told me that these cars are polluting the ecology, I told them, I'm sorry, Arseny Petrovich, but your Mercedes, Mercedes, which is going through the city every day, from Petrovsky to Kyiv makes much more harm to the ecology than Moskvich of some old pensioner who doesn't have any fuel to fill it in. So this Moskvich is standing in the garage, he's going to his dacha, uh, the free train, and only once a year he takes the car to bring some of the turnips back. So for this one drive, he will harm the ecology much less. So this is the situation for today, for you to understand which are forces for the decrease of the taxes and which are the forces which organized this business on the providing of the Ukrainians of the cars of the European plates. What are the cars of counteracting the decrease of the taxation? And they want the situation to be the same, for the taxes to be as high as it used to be. And I will just decrease the hazards. Maybe my colleague Alexander will correct me, but still, I feel, I have a premonition that even if we take away the taxes, the lots of cars and their foreign registration, and I'm interested in Alexander's opinion, they can't be documented and fixed and legalized in Ukraine. Why? I will explain it to you. Because those are the cars which are the pro uh, ownership of those Lithuanian firm, uh, firms. How can you legalize the property of a foreign country? For that, the Ukrainian has to come to Lithuania to find this firm. Then the representative of the firm has to go to the notary to pay the fees, the charges and the taxes to, uh, for instance, to uh, have the treaty of the because now, according to the documents, this is the document of some, someone's firm, a foreign firm. And I read the law of the traffic of Lithuania. If the car, once in 180 days, doesn't have an insurance in Lithuania, it's not considered to be used anymore. It strikes off the register, striking off the register. So I'm sure that lots of the people who don't write anything about that. They can't be legalized. And the same happens if they don't have the proper technical examination. So rather lots of threats that lots of cars won't be legalized. Thank you. Thank you, Oleg. Please, Alexander. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you that you organized such a communication because of this topic. My name is Alexander Chernyavsky, and I am one of the founders of the organization of all Ukrainian organization after Yevrosila. We are uniting all of the people who are using the European plates 
uh, cars. And on the 5th and 6th um, uh, of September, we had the latest strike under the walls of the Verkhovna Rada of the parliament. And reading uh, the topic to legalize or not legalize, we don't want to legalize them. We want the taxes to be affordable. We want to clean the customs uh, uh, according to the fair rates. Because those cars, which are already in Ukraine, they are already totally lawful. And if our state officials are telling which they are lo that they are lawless, you have to arrest all of the customs officers, all of those um, who let them in. Again, I emphasize, all those cars are legalized already. The third one. We met Oleg Nazarenko for many times and communicated personally, and I must say that our positions coincided that the taxes have to be decreased and then they will be paid off. That's it. And the situation with European plates was uh, created because buying the car before the 1996, before the law was adopted of the fake standard of Euro 5 to resell, a human buying, a person buying a car of 2000 or 2002 for two or three thousand of Euro had to pay for the customs clearance about eight to nine thousand euro. So if the car costs three thousand, he had to make customs clearance for twelve thousand. So how, how can it happen in any country? I'm buying the cell phone for three hundred dollars, but I have to pay taxes nine hundred dollars more. It's just unbearable. It's not understandable. Why do we have such a taxation legislation? This is what led us to the problems when people, without having, in 2014, especially here, and the previous speakers told about that, the currency had three times growth. Well, because the car has become again a luxury. Even Lanus has become a luxury. And that is why the people decided to study the legislation, European, the customs legislation of Ukraine, which has been uh, changed uh, lately, only in 2012. So Ukrainian national legislation and international legislation and the legislation of the EU countries. So as a result of the studies of these legislation, we found out that there is such an opportunity having rather high risks, which were mentioned by Oleg, that the car is an ownership either of the foreign citizen or the foreign firm, to bring this car as the service one and to use it on the territory of Ukraine, having all the risks, bearing all the risks. Still, the price of this question, having the car for two or three or four thousand euro, and to buy all of the cars for 12,000 euro, this is the difference which was always for the fair to risk and to use the car which is owned by a European company. This is the prehistory of how the cars emerged on the European plates in Ukraine. I'm answering the question as for the how we could change the situation with the cars. You asked me this question, Oleg, that they don't own to European companies. Yes, it's easy. We can take them out there to Lithuania, to Poland, where most of all they're taken from, and to take them out, just out of the account, just to strike off the register, take off the books. And Oleg, I will answer your words because you mentioned I heard only two powers which uh, are against the decrease of the taxes. The Ukrainians themselves, which have the network of the billions taken abroad. So the Ukrainians thought about the high taxes, then the Ukrainians created the system and the network to bring the expensive cars. So yes, the Ukrainians are to blame, of course, like always. So I consider that there is a certain manipulation going on here. There is this certain line of local producers, and it's profitable for them to produce in Ukraine and to sell their brands in Ukraine which is not a production, but still 
a, a big assembling of the wheels, for instance, only. If I take the Chinese cell phone and put the label, the brand Kalina, and then it, we shall say that it's a Ukrainian one. It used to be Huawei, now it's Kalina. And please increase the input rates five times and I will sell this phone and I will have complaints why the sales of my cell phone get, went down and why everybody is trying not to buy Kalina but some other cell phone. This is the comparison. On the one hand, it's a stupid scheme, but on the other hand, we do understand that certain people earn money on that. That is why I'd like to say that if we are going along the logic that the Ukrainians are such nice businessmen and they don't want to have decreased taxes, so before they had certain limitations in 2016 as for the Euro 5 and lots of and the resales during the years. Lots of Ukrainians, they went abroad, they spent their own money, they spent their time to bring the car here and took money for that. They were so cunning, right? So they were just giving the service they got to bring the car here and to cleanse it of the customs. There are lots of Ukrainians who are bringing cars from abroad. They're finding the Ukrainian who will register it on himself for that other Ukrainian to lose the right to refill the forms and then they again take thousand, two, three thousands and sometimes ten thousands if it's a very expensive cars. These people exist. This is not only the importers, those are importers and private people who deal with that. Those, this is just a normal practice when the people are earning money on that, giving you the service. They're going abroad. Euro 5, not Euro 5, they're giving the service, they choose, they check the car, they are uh, coming here and they pay for that. What's bad in that? What the government tells us before the strike on the 5th and 6th of September, for a couple of days we were sitting in the cabinet of ministers, we had the meeting of the police, of the Ministry of Transport, Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Economy. And what the Ministry of Finance told us, for me it was just a shock. One of the reasons why we don't have to do any actions to decrease the taxes because the cancellation of Euro 5, because the Ministry of Finance says that it would harm the ecology. We asked, why do you, Minister of Finance, speak about the ecology? So during all of our meetings, and those meetings, this is the Committee of Customs Policy, the Cabinet of Ministers didn't have a single expert on the Ministry of Ecology who would come and show the calculations, not a single time. We're having some kind of populism that Europe plates are killing people on the catastrophes, though we have an official document from the police that only 5% of all of the catastrophes are connected with the Europe plates. This is an official document. As for the ecology, we're having certain phrase that if the people are coming here and there will be an ecological catastrophe, but still disaster, but we have official documents that 80% of all of the wastes, harmful wastes, are connected with the energy generating organization like heating electro stations and metal factories and nobody says that Euro 5 is their norms just to close of those factories. Nobody takes care about that. Only the cars which will create ecological disaster really worry them. But the most interesting fact that those cars are already here. We are already living in this awful ecological disaster, right? So this Euro 5 during the latest meeting of the Committee of Tax Taxation Policy, we understood that Euro 5 is totally fake norm which was introduced by the lobbyists which produce cars and in fact they just assembly assembly the wheels so the EU doesn't claim the standard of Euro 5 in any car of Europe you can use the car which used to work which was produced in the 70s in the 80s the only criterion is the technical repairments if you have the passport of the technical if you have a, techn a technical intactness or accuracy. So there is nothing similar in 
any country, Lithuania, Poland, it just doesn't exist. It's just a fake which is told from time to time just to deceive. So, our, I will emphasize our position of, after Evrosila and our, of all of the owners that the taxes have to go down. When we asked how much should they be decreased, we heard again that there are certain things we have to check. We've had lots of discussions about the VAT, the duty. When we're told that this tax is impossible to be cancelled, the duty is impossible to be cancelled, but recently I read that for the some of the branches of the industry, some of the VAT and duties were, were were cancelled. So we want an accessible clearance, customs clearance, the cancellation for this fake Euro 5 for the resales, and those are the main requirements. Thanks. We're, we're having a very nice transition from Oleg to Alexander, and now we're having lots of questions about the Euro 5 standards as an important element and the opinion of those who were trying to speak about the ecological situation, the environment situation, were thinking about the the whole. Catherine, we'd like to hear your opinion. What does your organization think and what do activists, ecological activists consider about this policy? Hello. First of all, why do we have any ecological standards? As for the cars, I'd like to answer the question, how do the cars influence the environment? These standards concern the technical state of the cars which influence the wastes and extractions and all of the harmful substances. What's being done by the cars? I think that everybody knows that the whole gas, uh, gas mixture is the CO2, the nitrogen, uh, the oxygen, uh, the lots of benzopyrins. Those are the main substances and hard metals and lead. What the, the CO2 substances can do to the person, for instance, Uh, for instance, it, it could bring uh, it could bring to the oxygen an efficiency up to death. The same as for the nitrogen acids and one of the hard metals which are in their body of the person. There is a whole list of different influences of the gases onto the organism of a person. If this person is in such a megapolis like Kiev, it can lead to the immune deficit, bronchitis, pneumonias. Benzopyrines are the cancerogenous substances and they can lead to cancer, the cancer of lungs and any other uh, parts of the body. The lead can be stored in the organism and it can lead to certain violation of work of the organisms because of the lack of the oxygen. There could be different atherosclerosis as a consequence and allergic reactions. It can be seen anywhere, even here at Antonovich Street where we are, where there is the minimum of trees, maximum of cars, especially during the traffic jams times. And we can see the quantity of cars, which is excessive concentration of the exhaustion into the atmosphere. This is what the people breathe with. Of course, it influences the health of the people. So any person would like to be healthy and wants to live in a healthy environment. So those exhaustions, they influence not only the health of the person, they influence all of the components, the exhaustion gases. They all influence the atmospheric air, the substances which are sedimented, they influence the soils. For instance, the overdose of lead 
close to the roads, and also they influence the water objects. All of those mixtures are precipitated, sedimented, and they influence the plants and the flora and fauna. Because sometimes in Ukraine we don't have the certain defense stripes, defense strips around, along the roads. All of those exhaustion subst substances are sedimented on the plants, and not a single one can guarantee that in the package of some porridge there are no that this buckwheat was not grown on such a field like it used to be close to Odessa Road, where for lots of years, dozens of years, there are cars going to and fro. So that is why it's important along the bigger highways. That's why the European countries, they paid attention to that, because it influences the health of the people. You need to modernize automobile transport and modernize it in the way for it to decrease the exhaustion of those harmful substances. We looked at the matter of the cars on the European plates from the point of view that why the cheap cars from Europe are being bought and brought to Ukraine without the registration. As, the Euro as Europe has certain standards of Euro 5, Euro 6, the obsolete cars which are not correspondent to those standards they are being utilized, they pay the different charges and fees, and of course, there are certain honest Europeans, fair ones, but if they have an opportunity not only to avoid paying money for the utilization, but to sell the car, that is to get money for this car, and to get the paper that this car was utilized in some different country, to get, for instance, some money in Germany, that it was utilized beyond the borders of, the German, of Germany, is better for them. So Ukraine is transformed into a kind of a dump. We are having the wastes from some other countries. Well, in a certain way, there's, this is wastes, because they are technical means which are not correspondent to the standards. So instead of utilization in, the, in Europe, they do that in Ukraine. A certain percent of these cars is not only correspondent to the ecological standards, it's really just scrap. Some of the cars which got to the seawater or after some floodings, and when you have some of the violations in the electronic works, so it can look well, but if you gather it, get it out of the water, you won't be able, because of the corrosion process, so the car will be just suffering because of corrosion, it will become dangerous. There are certain violations of the systemic fuel systems, electronics. It's already dangerous for a person who bought it. That is why we're looking from this point of view, too. There are certain ways of utilization of these cars. Ukraine has signed the association agreement. It's signed the association, I will quote, the association of the unified technical conditions for the wheeled transport means we need to make all of the 99 rules and all of the ecological standards, it's complicated for us because you need to adapt it for real uh, conditions. But if it's written in the association agreement, the Ukraine has to modernize both the issue and the cars which are already in use. So if we want to get into the EU, we need to be corresponded to those norms and requirements which are written in the agreement. And also we'd like to look at the matter of the safety for life, as ecology is not only about the environment, 
but about the human being, him or herself. As these cars can be dangerous, the people which buy them, if this car is cheap and bought at the market of Moldova, not more than for, for, for less than 1,000 euro, and the Polish market, it's the certain responsibility. So the person who deals with that, he won't feel such great responsibility. It's really the problem. I don't know, about 5%, maybe more or less, if something happens, this car can be just left. It's never insured, so any traffic accident can lead to awful consequences. So our professionals are ready to join the discussions of this process. I think that we will hear lots of arguments today, but our position is as follows. We need to solve this matter, both from the ecological and economic points of view. Because, of course, you can say that economic standards are fake and everything can be earned, but still we need to come close to them because it's about the health. And the majority of the people who have money and all the rest they are trying to live beyond the borders of the city and the key Ky Kyiv city has increased its ecological capability so we are really living in the conditions when which sometimes become in some parts of the city are totally inaccessible un unbearable for life thanks catherine so please not more 6 7 minutes later on please hello I heard just quotes of the Minister of Finance who mentioned about ecology, but I do remember the State Secretary who said, where can I find three billion of Grivnia? This is what was his main reason. Three billion of Grivnia. This is the tax and duty which is act acting now. So I'm always surprised by such behavior of the authority when we have some obvious problems in the society and it's so obvious that everybody is going along the streets and they can see those Lithuanian plates. There are so many of them around us. It's obvious that there is certain norm of the law and people just don't want to do it. It's obvious. We have to cancel it. People won't do that. If we compare the figures of non-sufficient uh, payments for the budget. So the scientists in the Kyiv Polytechnical Institute decided to assess the sum of money of the smuggling into Ukraine. They assessed the production rate and this figure was of course dreadful because the smuggling is estimated 800 billion grivna. That's what they did. The colleagues of RPR said about 250 billion grivna. It's very difficult to measure, honestly speaking. The import is totally impossible to buy because any equipment from China can be brought according to the uh, weight only. You don't have to customs clear. No, no VAT, just it has to suit the box and you can bring it in. So this car, uh, uh, this this measurements can be only as for the VAT about 600 billion dollars a year. And it's again unsubstantial rate of finances into the budget. And some of the rudimentary structures like Academy of Pedagogical Sciences, Academy of Medicine Sciences, those are buildings, those are fake doctor's dissertations, those are the programs of qualifications which don't or are not worth anything. And just imagine the Academy of Agrarian Sciences, which has 400,000 um, square meters of land and people don't know how to use it. Those are great gaps in the state budget, 87 billions of expenses of the state in enterprises. Look at the social sphere and nobody wants to create the verification. So altogether we're having only 300 billion grivna. Of shortfalls into the budget. So the authorities is always trying to find whom we should press off. 
Sometimes those are certain uh, legal entities, and now they co have found Lithuanian plates. Nobody wants to solve this problem in a constructive way, though for the authorities, if the authority wants to, well, the power wants to have a certain law draft through the parliament, they can do that in several days. If they wanted to create the minimal salary 3,200 or to have the certain fine of the law inspection, uh, of the labor inspection, it's very quick. So they just lack the will, they just lack the wish to solve those problems, though they won't get rid of those problems, it won't just vanish. It will be supported until it won't be solved. So that's why I'm telling that this duty shouldn't exist. And of course, Euro 5 is an open fraud which doesn't exist in a single country of Europe. Everywhere the used car is in ownership. Not a single person can ban you to, st uh, to register it and to drive it. But Euro 5 is only for the production. Thank you. Thank you, Pavlo. Thank you, Denis. Please. Well, I will apologize because maybe I will be rather harsh. I have a very strong dissonance. It seems to me that 90% of what Tess said now is just a demagogy. Because we have the debates about the legalization or non-legalization of European plates, and we are speaking about the decrease, non-decrease of the taxes and so on. This is a kind of a discord. I have a very unpopular uh, point of view. I'll try to formulate it for two minutes only. Look, why Britain or for instance the Netherlands, very developed countries, because for centuries they wanted to be corresponded to the laws. And now we know that the British law, when we're speaking to this or that person, the independent British court will solve our matter. What's going on now? I will make two comparisons only. At our place, someone robbed a place and once uh, the article in the criminal code to be cancelled because Poroshenko does that too. And the second one, Putin stole the Crimea and now he's trying to legalize it. People brought two million of cars violating the legislation and now they're trying to legalize it beforehand. Guys, we need to stand for the laws and then to change the laws. We've got millions of arguments why this law shouldn't be done. And when we change this law, there will be always people with millions of arguments which I could, uh, I could have heard here. You can't do that with hindsight, with a retrospective effect. My relative lives in Austria with Ukrainian citizenship. He couldn't come in, in on his car because he has the residency permit there, but Ukrainian citizenship. He spent 12 hours at the customs and then went back. Do you think we have to put them to jail? I think that we should cut their hands. Corruption is the cancer of the society. And that the thing that we see those cars is the complex problem. We've got the systematic violation of law. And everything I hear now, let us do it with hindsight for it not to exist anymore. I don't see the difference. Whether it's the customs law, the legislations of the cars, the criminal code, the tax codes, it's just the same. We violate the law. Five years ago, I took a decision not to give a single bribe at all. And I'm still living like that. It's very complicated, physically complicated in our country, but there are not so many people in our country. I don't know whether they exist here. But what I hear here, first, yeah, I can hear dem demagogy. We have the topic here written, everybody is to blame but the people who are exploiting illegally the cars. I'm not speaking about the state. We have a systematic violation of laws. So instead of uh, solving the matter with the legislation, we are thinking how to legalize it. When the Ukrainian businessman, entrepreneur, is coming to the US, he's doing the same. He's either put to jail or he can become the castaway. So, guys, we have to follow the laws. This is my position. It's not connected with the cars. I'd like to add to Denise, do you have bitcoins? 
some cryptocurrency. One, you violated the law, you violated the financial law of Ukraine, you're an outlaw, you stole it. You are the same thief as I am who has the car, uh, and Poroshenko who tries to rob someone. This is the populism matter. If you don't pay tax taxes from your profits, you gave some consultation and you were paid uh, 1,000 hryvnias as for that. So you didn't pay the taxes. If you pay someone in the develop, you violated the law. If you buy bitcoins, you violated the law. So the question is, who is the stupid, the law or the people who violate it? Maybe we should think about the context, about how to change the laws. In 2015, our organization researched six main schemes how the car is brought in. After that, we saw that high cost of customs clearance leads to corruption. And those cars which temporary or is one of the schemes. There is a wonderful scheme, legal cars which are customs cleared here. For instance, the customs officers see some non-existent uh, repayment works. For instance, there is a Range Rover which costs $60,000. For instance, we can see the Range Rover supercharger. But the customs officers write $60,000 and then he saves $10,000 and they have Ukrainian plates and so on and so forth. And we've got lots of uh, that. Uh, examples. For instance, they dismantle the, all of the spare parts of the uh, cars and then there were certain situations when the wheels were dismantled, then they just brought back the wheels and they officially paid customs, which were a bit lower still. The idea was, our expert which de dealt with this question, they said that these great customs clearance fees, which were about 80-300%, they had a protectionist function to defend the Ukrainian car producer. In 2008, they produced 435,000 cars, and now we're having the high duties and different fees for the foreign products. They don't have this function of the defense of the local producer. They only fill the budget, so they act according to the principle that the car has to, uh, cow has to give more milk. So we have to, uh, to, to take this milk more often. Out of those working places, we pay the taxes of the pension fund and all the other. So they say that we have to do the milking more often. But still, we invent some new duties, new taxes, and that's how we increase the price of the goods and services. Why do Ukrainians come to Poland and say, why is the food cheaper in their restaurants than in Kiev? Because we have such a taxation policy. Don't get surprised that something is more expensive here than there. And of course, there is certain sense to break this vicious circle. We have nine classes of cars, for instance, we can take the rate of 500,000, 1.5 and so on, then there will be no sense for the customs officers to uh, violate the laws, because if you bring some sports car which costs $80,000, and its customs clearance costs 5,000, it's a totally different prices. The same happens when you have to cancel Euro 5. I will give you a wonderful example. Maybe you saw uh, the movie uh, with Nicolas Cage. So there was the Ford Mustang with Nicolas Cage, a wonderful movie. Uh, well, so they wanted to take the uh, this movie in this movie, they wanted to take Ford Mustang. It's just impossible. Gone in 60 seconds. So the garage of Yanukovych was illegal, right? After 2016, Euro 5 was introduced in 2016. So yes, our president, was, uh, of course, was listening to the laws. He always was corresponded to the laws. And we have a wonderful decree of the Ministry of Culture. 
uh, as for the cultural values. All the cars before the 1950 is the cultural value. So if this Ford Mustang uh, was uh, driven by the president of the US, you have to get lots of certificates and to bring to the customs, and then they will take decision and again another corruption scheme and so on. So in fact, we see that there is no uh, risible. So as for the ruins which are coming here and spoiling the sky, have you ever seen the orange sky? Come to Zaporizhia and you will see this orange sky, it's sparkling there. Because they sometimes at one of the factories turn off the filters and that's why it's becoming oranges. Or they're just pouring some of the wastes uh, to the Dnieper river. That's why it's in, in July it's already flourishing and blooming. Or for instance Azov Stal in Mariupol or metallurgic factory named after Illich. So if we're speaking about the ecology, let's speak in a complex way and find those brutal violators when people are dying because of them, because Zaporizhia is one of the leaders in Ukraine as for the quantity of the asthma sick people, as for the as for the ecology. Very important element is that we are always saying that that we always have some of the shortings in the budgets. The statistics 2016 we had the sum of three billion of Grivna taken at the expense of this duty, but 30 billion of hryvnia were got because of the duties for the fuel. The more cars we have, uh, the more fuel uh, pavements are coming. Somehow we are not saying that in Ukraine is not a luxury at all. We are thinking, oh, what a wonderful Porsche Cayenne, it's so you know, expensive. But let's look at the context of the resident of some city or the town. There is a certain connection between the center of the region and the smaller village. For them to sell certain vegetables, cheese or milk, for them to know that they can go not to this factory, but anywhere else, 10 kilometers from it, and it will be much more expensive, 50 percent expensive. It will allow the Ukrainians, which are not those cool and not uh, driving all over the world, they are living everyday life, it will be the tool for production for them. They will be able to give their goods. They could, will have some transportation connection between the cities. It's an opportunity for the development of the internal tourism when you will come along the country. Because if you live in Kiev, and in 12 hours you can get to any other spot. But if you live in Chernihiv, to get to Chernivtsi is a big problem and a great adventure. So it is also a very important thing. And creation of the new stations of technical service and so on. It will give the new push. And again, I heard a very nice example of Lithuania. Lithuanians are very clever people. They were able to transform themselves into the transport hub. They gathered all of their relatives and from Lithuania they sell it from uh, to Ukraine to Belarusia and to Russia and even to Kaunas for instance I will go with my Lithuanian insurance I will pay my 27 euro so they build business on that they give certain work for their for certain repairment and maintenance. People are coming there and paying for uh, tickets. They are paying for hotels there. And even these cars are sent to Kazakhstan, those used cars. So we can see how the country was able to use this uniqueness and to earn enough of money. Somehow we decided to stop this. We're stubborn and we decided to make these crusaders myths that these people are so bad. And especially from Mr. Oleg, it was very surprising for me to hear that these firms are lobbyists of high taxes. It's very weird, because knowing those people, if tomorrow the border would be open, they would do the same. They would just send older cars. Yes, for me, I bought the cars. I'm not an expert. I paid those people for an expertise because they understand that they checked about the dozens of cars. They, uh, they uh, chose the best one and they came to me. And in the future, I will do the same because I 
need a high-quality used car which will save my family budget, that's it. So this is a kind of demonization of ours. Yes, yes, I'm almost over. So the power consider that the orthodox that Rotterdam plus and refinance for private bank, 150 billion of Grivny and other non-transparency of the state enterprise where they have the main cases of corruption and non enough of the extraction of FAMBA which is ca uh, carried out by one of the sons of the ministers. This is not the evil. The evil is the lousy euro plates uh, which are not paying money to the budget and they are spoiling our sacred air. That's it. Thank you, Mikola. Well, in fact, coming back to the first presentations of the economic freedoms indexes today in the morning, it's a very interesting topic Voloda thought about and we are discussing now, because now it turns out that in this question there is a certain contradiction between the components of the indices that on the one hand for the, to have the real economic freedom in uh, Ukraine we need the rule of law and the last two speeches were whether this rule of law has to exist for everyone or it has to exist only in the case when all of the rest are higher according to the status and subordinate to this principle and on the other hand there is the role of the state whether this rule of law uh, an important factor for economic freedom if the role of the state is not correspondent to the higher principles of economic freedom. I would now give an opportunity, we're having two questions, three questions, to have certain questions uh, or to speak and after that I'd like to give the floor to all of you with a short response for a certain question. I'll just ask it now, only a minute from each of you. Do you think, is it necessary to solve this crisis? How can we do that? What do we have to do to solve this crisis and not together in a year and to discuss this matter again? Please, Volodymyr. Thank you so much. I will become not only as an expert, but as the main expert of the group of taxation reform. So not a single problem with budget doesn't exist. The budget will only win if we take away the duties, because those banning duties were never paid. The figure 3 billion surprised me. I've never heard about such figure as for the budget. I heard only about the, twi uh, the, the smaller figures, twice as small as possible, and it's connected with the duties to the new cars which are sold and which are still anachronisms because the car is not a luxury but the way to go. But the ex, uh, the but the. Um, uh, the cars taken to Ukraine is just keeping the replacement of the automobile car parks because this argument is totally wrong. I'm sorry, but this argument about Euro 5 is mentioned by people who don't know mathematics. There is such a notion as average. And if the average is Euro 4 and you're banning Euro 4 and only Euro 5, then the ecology is becoming better. If the average is less than Euro 2, because we've got lots of Zhiguli. Not a single euro is suiting this scheme. So if you allow the mass bringing up of Euro 4, your ecology is becoming better. So the polluting cars, they will go to the village and they will perform the socially important function. And this pollution is that nobody cares because the concentration of the cars is just very small there. If you want to in, uh, to improve the ecology. We have to think about the trucks, about the usage of the lead is banned about 20 years ago. All of the data you talked about, about the lead, is from the Soviet times, my dear. Why they are brought here? Not because of the scrap because they're ecologically bad, but because of a very simple reason. I just came from Croatia, I have a very old car, it got broken, and to repair the generator I had to spend 400 euro. In Ukraine it cost eight times less. This is the reason why the used cars 
in the rich countries with expensive labor force, they are underestimated. I haven't still found uh, a person from Ukraine who would be able to do something with my car. They cost cheap, but the exploitation is expensive. So we need to say that our country is cheaper, and all of the cheap countries buy used things, used equipment, the factories buy used equipment, and it's a totally normal situation, because its exploitation is much less. So the difference between the price of the car in Germany and Ukraine is the measure for the economist of that use the Ukrainian gets when he buys this car not for 10,000 euro but for 3,000. This is the difference. So if this difference is multiplied for because of the banned duties cars, you will get 1 billion, at least 1 billion euro a year of the full economic expense, pure economic expense for the citizens of Ukraine. It's the robbing, which was never covered by those automobile producers, even during their better times. And even now we shouldn't speak about that. As for the law matter, I am for the I'm for the situation when we don't have stupid laws which are not corresponded to the practice. If the law is law, we should say that it should be corresponded to the practice. Look at the traffic rules, how they in Germany and even in Hungary, or maybe less in Croatia, but still they have it. Yes, they're rather harsh, but still, for instance, if it's allowed in the city to have 50 of them and the narrow street you can have 70 and in the broad street you can have 100. This is the principle which is corresponded to the rule of law. As for Ukraine, we have an old tradition of the Russian Empire, the laws which are really violated and don't have trust to them and the only way which we use now in the tax sphere is to make it not happen, is just to take away the laws which are not performed. The excise duty should be cancelled, or at least it should be performed as it was recently performed for the cars after 2010, without any limitations on the same level as the new cars. In this case, the budget in any of these cases, the budget will win at the expense of the payments about the customs clearance of VAT. You can't cancel VAT, of course, but all of the excise duties have to be cancelled. Because it will be the discrimination of all of the rest. Yurishulipa International Fund of Effective Democracy. I'd like to say that the problem of auto euro plates is very complicated and, in my opinion, Ukraine really has an automobile mafia because we've got some groups of MPs, customers and other commercial structures which are really interested to earn money on people. As for, let's say, owners of the cars with European cars, we totally support them, because on the, from the point of law, it's the form of defense of the civil and constitutional rights. Because first of all, people try to defend their rights, and secondly, there are certain protests. They don't want to become victims of the state fraud. That's why we totally support this movement and we are for cancellation of all so-called all of the customs 
duties for the cars at least until our car market isn't saturated because it's really a big blow of our on our economy thank you so much and the last comment from the whole and after that we'll have to sum up our discussion with some certain steps thank you I would be very glad uh, my name is Sergei I would be very glad if this discussion would be a totally expert one but unfortunately as far as I understand it's already the political question knowing that this is not the discussion how the customs should uh, duties should be and which cars should be brought this is the matter what will be brought in and according to that there is a certain social group which has certain arguments and proofs and so on uh, that the law is violated of course but still it's more profitable for someone. So, of course, on the one hand, I'd like to support the position of Mr. Denis, who left already, as for the law is law and we have to follow it and not to violate it. But on the other hand, I can see the political problem there, that in fact this situation had a contradiction of one part of the society to the other one. The people who brought the cars with the Lithuanian uh, plates are the clever ones, and those who have Ukrainian ones and buy the cars here at the dealers, they're foolish, right? So this is the matter which troubles me most of all, because I personally, I want to have, maybe, I'd like to have not the zero duties, but at least the lowest duties. But on the other hand, this is the political problem. So I really don't like that the country is contradicts, is contradict, there are contradictions among the different parts. That's it, that's it. We need to sum up, I, I'm afraid. So in the same order but without Dennis who left already because we are out of time what can we do some of the precise steps well my colleague has just uh, well we can allow to customs clear customs clearance on the European plates with a minimum price of customs clearance but still the country gives back uh, the money with the Euro Ukrainian registration which were paid for the full customs clearance for not to have any contradictions in the society and not to, uh, to have any of the offenses we are having the customs clearance but everyone who has a uh, Ukrainian generation he has right to get the money for the customs clearance he did before the next one please So, the only, as Otto Yerosila considers, the solution of this question is to take away the fake norms like Euro 5, Euro 4, and so on. So, the only criteria whether the car can be used or not is its technical state. It's number one. The second, to take away all of the discrimination taxes like excise duties and increased duties. Now we have certain limitations for the resales of the cars. If I brought the car here, I can't resell it in a year. Why? I don't understand it. And the last one. Now at the customs we have the whole system because we need to buy all of the permits which are impossible to take that the car is like this or maybe it's wrong. So we need to create a transparent system of the only window when the person can do that, can do the customs clearance for a quarter of an hour for it to be very simple, easy and transparent. Thank you. As for the lead, well, not 20 years ago, but less, 15 years ago, but still there was the question in the article that it was banned in Ukraine, but still certain producers of the fuel, they still add it and so on. Your offers, please. Well, there was the question about the lead, but my offers are, I have one suggestion to take into consideration and to estimate the influence onto the environment, because the person can't live without the environment. If the influence is done, it will certain have, uh, certainly have an effect onto the environment. The person breathes this air, eats this food, grows 
he eats his or her food on this soil. So we should take into consideration this component always. As for the distribution, well, some of the bisection of the population, I don't agree. There are always people in the society which have a certain courage and they violate the law for the social good. Though I am the owner of the Ukrainian plates, I was here with the guys and stood at this strike for a short time, especially when there was smoke there. And, you know, now is the time when only the street can change something. We see that the government and the authority don't change any laws, there are no reforms at all. So these bold people who are coming out and demonstrating something, they, can, they try to change the whole society, uh, social, societal life. So when I buy the next car, maybe I won't be able to pay duties. But still, we need to contradistinguish. But when my daughter grows up, it would be really nice if she would be able to buy something without any duties. As for the laws, as, as the gravitation law, it should be discovered, it should be opened. The same should happen with the economic laws. So I'm really grateful to the guys that they came to the square and they came to the streets and showed their force. Thank you. As for the laws, I'm ready to pay the fine for 8.5 thousand of Grivnia for the violation of the tax laws. But I'd like, Alexander was right to say I have nothing to add, but still I'd like to make a populistic remark for the populistic phrase of Mr. Oleg. Mr. Oleg said that let the money come back to him. Look, it's an interesting moment. After Maidan, people decided to self-organize and showed a very high institu institutionalized development tendency. So the owners of the Europlates were able to come together, they pay their membership of 700 uh, grivnia a year, they have the regional organizations if there is certain pressure from the customs or the police, they have certain raids to repair their roads. This is the, uh, this movement which is trained by the Americans in Ukraine, by the way, and lots of people heard about that but couldn't use that. So some people like Oleg Nazarenko, I can suggest you in the association, on the suffered association, and to get to court against uh, Mr. Vasadze, Sviatosh, and Poroshenko for you to get the money back from those who got profits. And I, I think instead of Denise, who have three and three, I would say that what Denise would like to say that everybody who violated the current legislation should be punished according to this legislation. And you can't violate whether you agree with the legislation or not. Thanks for everyone. Though there were different opinions here, but we understood this topic much better now. And now I give the floor to Volodymyr.